Sí. Hello, the movers and shakers of Rotary around the world. You, the DGEs, are the movers, and I am shaker. <laughs> Today, you are taking a very important step in your journey of service. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The forthcoming 17 Good morning, everybody. will be the most everybody this morning? months in your life. Good. Good. You turn this period into the most satisfying period of your life. During this period, I urge you to dream big, guided by our shared vision for Rotary. You will plan and set goals, inspire and motivate Rotarians to reach goals. Goals to expand the reach of our organization by increasing membership and goals to increase the impact of Rotary by serving the world. And in this journey, you will play a stellar role as you share your goals with Rotarians and Rotaractors in your district and inspire them to do more and grow more. Friends, this will be our guiding mantra. Do more as in bigger and impactful service projects and grow more as in increasing our membership and expanding the participation. Membership Friends continues to be our biggest challenge. For the last 17 plus years, our membership has been at 1.2 million. Together, let us change that over the next 17 months. My dear change maker governors, here is your opportunity to make the biggest change in Rotary history as far as membership is concerned. What we have not accomplished in the last 17 years, I challenge you to accomplish in 17 months. But that's too big a dream, you may say. Well, if I ask you to dream big, I have to lead from the front. One of my inspiration comes from what George Bernard Shaw said. He said, you see things and you say, why? But I dream of things that never were, and I say, why not? So friends, the dream is to increase our membership to 1.3 million by 1st July 2022. How can we reach that incredible goal? The answer is, each one bring one. Ask each Rotarian to bring one member to Rotary in the next 17 months. Just one member in 17 months is all you need to ask of every Rotarian in your district. You can ensure this by leading by example and having your club presidents lead by example as well. As Rotarians in every club do this, they too will become change makers as they will change the lives for good of each person that they make a Rotarian. Governors elect, we need to grow more to do more. I have always hugely been inspired by the motto of Rotary, service above self. It has taught me to care for others and share with others. Service to me is about thinking of others even before I think of myself. On thinking about others, let me share one of my Rotary moments. I had just joined my Rotary club and the club organized a limb camp. Here, we were distributing calipers, artificial limbs, and hand cycles. Every member was given some responsibility, and so was I. I was to check if the beneficiary of the hand cycle had enough strength in his hand to ride the tricycle by his hands. And I was to do this by asking the beneficiary to pull my hand so that I could fathom the strength in his hands. As I stood in my designated spot, waiting for the beneficiary to come, I saw him crawling towards me. He had no legs, so he had to crawl towards me. I stretched my hands to hold his, and I'll be honest, in that moment, I was thinking about me and not about him. I was thinking about my cleanliness, my health. I did not want to hold his hand, but I did it. 
and kept thinking of myself for the second and third set of hands but suddenly after the sixth seventh set of hands my empathy towards their plight grew and soon enough i could feel their pain their challenges and i was thinking more about them than i was thinking of myself it was it was at that moment friends when from being just a member of my rotary club i became a rotarian soon i started attending more club projects as a rotarian when i had first gone out to the rural areas of india 35 years back i truly understood the plight of my brethren they had no toilets in their homes the water they drank from was from the same pond that they bathed in the schools were in the shade of a tree and the black painted wall was the only blackboard in the school the nearest health center was a few miles away with basic facilities and then through my rotary club we helped set up toilets provided clean drinking water we enhanced the education system and set up world class health facilities not just in my community or my city but in my country rotary kindled the spark within me to look beyond myself and embrace humanity service became a way of life for me and my life's guiding philosophy became service is the rent i pay for the space i occupy on this earth and i want to be a good tenant of this earth i'm sure each of you also has found your opportunity to serve you too may have provided eyesight to the blind food to the hungry homes to the homeless they may have been small opportunities of service or large projects more than just the size it is the attitude that defines service gandhi was once getting up on a train even as he was getting up on the train the train started moving and one of his slippers fell off morning his immediate reaction was to throw his other slipper to where the previous one had fallen his friend who was traveling with him asked him why did you do that gandhi said someone will find that slipper what good will be one slipper to him so i threw the other friends it was a small act of service but i think it was a big attitude of service are we also ready to think of others before we think of ourselves as rotarians we can do just that why else have rotarians spent billions of dollars and volunteer hours over the last 35 plus years to eradicate polio and serve mankind Why else have we set up thousands of schools, hundreds of hospitals, provided water in parched villages, brought dignity to people by providing toilets in their homes, given the gift of life to tens of thousands of children by doing their heart surgeries? Rotarians keep serving because we want to change lives. One project in Nepal changes the lives of few thousand people. The family health program in Africa has served millions of people. A water project in Haiti has changed the lives of more than 10 million people. Back home in India, the Teach program of literacy and education has impacted the lives of millions of children. Many of you have been an important part of similar service projects and you have changed the lives of people. There was a need to serve and you served. Today the need to serve has become even more necessary and apparent. So my dear change maker governors in the coming rotary year I request you urge you cajole you to serve people and help to change their lives. So my dear governors our theme for the year 2021 2022 is serve to change lives.
Madam President, I stopped the video because I know it's seven o'clock and you yes, really want yes, to start thank on you. time. I was just sending you a message. Morning. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 7 a.m. Our meeting is now called to order. Good morning, fellow Rotarians and online guests. Welcome to our meeting this morning and Youth Service Month. We will now call on Mar Marlia Sherman, Kingsway Academy advisor to the Interact president at that school to bring the invocation. Good morning, everyone. Good it is morning. good to recognize how different we are. One of the advantages that they have. It is good to recognize how different we are. Our talents, our dreams, our backgrounds, our occupations. And it is good to know that when you created each of us, you broke the mold. No one is exactly like anyone else. Even our thumbprint and our voice track tell us how unique we are. Yet, we thank you that we can take these differences and mobilize them for the good of Rotary in our community. In our differences, we can think the same thoughts and move together toward a common goal. Bless us as we meet together. Thank you for our individuality and also for our common bond of Rotary. Amen. Thank you. We now have the loyal toast by Interactive Daniqua and Bristol, Government High School. Good morning, everyone. Please raise your glasses as we toast to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. To the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you. President Secretary Donet, please welcome our guests and visiting Rotarians. Thank you, Madam President. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And as I am saying the welcome, I'm admitting people into mm -hmm. the room. So I, I don't know. We only have 27 people so far. I, I think something is happening, <laughs> you know, something sprinkled last night and everybody's in some kind of deep slumber or woke up really late. But we're here and welcome to another sunrise meeting. And I'm going to start with our visiting Rotarians. I start with our guest speaker, um, who was up bright and early and here ahead of most of us, um, Rotarian Yasmin Chang. Yasmin, welcome. Um, Rotarian Roz, um, Yasmin will be our guest speaker, so she will be um, properly introduced to you later in the program. I'd like to welcome President Adrian. President Adrian, let me let you open your mic and say good morning because we are blessed to have you this early. I know this is really different for you to be up this early. And I know you're visiting with your secretary on your official president secretary tour. So let me hear from you, President Adrian. Are you still online? Yes, I am. I am definitely here and oh, happy to be good. so. Good. It's, uh, it's been a thrill of now seeing President uh, Francis on the call. President Francis and your, your club, you're making me a better man because I'm up, showered, and ready to go. And uh, a little bit of good rotary news is that I've actually booked my second vaccination appointment today at 9.30. Wonderful. So as Rotarians, we're doing great. Awesome. I love uh, all of my Rotarian family, and uh, thank you for having me. And I, I'm just going to check quickly to see whether or not um, our secretary is on yeah. yet. I don't think that she's tuned in her. yet, but uh, yes. we'll come through, if not today, on another day, but I'll, I'll post when I do see her. Thank you, guys, and God Thank bless. Thank you. Everybody. Delighted to have you this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. And we have a few presidents, other partners in the house. We have President Asia, um, Interact President, welcome. She was here bright and early. I know she's a good student <laughs> just from that. Um, we also have President Latoya from our Rotaract Club of Nassau Sunset. Welcome, President Latoya. 
So at this time, I don't know all the interactors, but I know that quite a few of them have tuned in. And I recognize the co-advisor from Government High School, Ms. Daniela Smith. And she's been here quite a few times. Welcome, Ms. Smith. Um, and so what I'm going to do is ask um, Director Melanie, as she knows they are, they are her babies. I'm going to ask her to, oh, um, I'm being corrected. And so I'll flip back to say A.G. Yasmin. Yes, I, I, yes. I wasn't sure of <laughs> A.G. Yasmin. I, yes. I knew I'd messed that up. I wasn't sure um, that I had it correct. So I just used mm -hmm. a generic um, Rotarian, but my apologies, A.G. Yasmin. So I'm gonna open the mic for Director Melanie to introduce her babies. Cause I know that quite a few of the interactors, there's a very different names and the cameras are off, but I think she may be able to recognize the interactors who are visiting with us this morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Morning. I, morning. I will first like to recognize those interactors who are participating this morning that is the president advisor from Kingsway Academy, Malia Sherman. Interacted Daniqua from Government High School. President and Paul Harris Fellow, Asia King from the Leadership Academy. And Brandon Butterfield, who was the interactor of the year last year from Kingsway Academy. We do have some interactors in, and I, online and I want to say that I am so proud of them this morning because they are all in the middle of school and external exams. So they are very busy, but, they, but they're taking the time to spend a few moments with us this morning. So I want to say a special, very special thank you to all of them. Awesome. Okay, welcome and I hope you guys enjoy the meeting. So I'm still scanning. I hope I didn't miss any other visiting Rotarians. Um, if you are a Rotarian and you're visiting, just open your mic and say hello. All right, I'm not seeing anyone. So that leaves me to welcome all of you members of the club who have joined us here this morning. Welcome to another Sunrise meeting. Thank you for being here. Over to you, President Francis. Thank you, Secretary Donnett. Now we'll ask a very capable Sergeant at Arms to take the floor. The floor is yours. Uh, well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Want, I'll start off by saying what a great day it is. And President Francis, I didn't see you in church on Sunday, did I? No, I was not there on Sunday. Oh, okay. But I sang and everything for the ladies. After having you a watch. very long, very long Saturday, really? I needed to rest. Yes, I was really? feet from 9 a.m. that morning. Oh, okay. Yes. It'll, it'll still be $5. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, I hope, hope all of you had a great, great Mother's Day. Yep. Okay. Um, now we had a great time on at the celebrations on Saturday. Would you agree? Yes, we did. I think we did. There, there, however, there were some people who absented themselves for whatever reason. I have asked the secretary and the treasurer to determine who those persons are and levy a $5 fine for anybody who did not attend the function. Okay, and for Indeed. those who did attend- Including yourselves. What? I was there. Virtually. Virtually, yeah, virtually. When you get my age, you don't go out too much, you know. <laughs> I was there. So, yeah. Yeah, and we ain't going into that. Take that back. Yeah, take that. I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> all those who didn't show up at all, virtually or in person, we charge. Okay. Um, who else going to get charged today? Yeah, there's some, some of us still have not signed on to my rotary. 
Now, the president gave me this, the, the secretary gave me this information. Said there's Simone, Chiselle, Kendrick, Ellsworth, and Yvonne. They have, they have not signed them. But now, said Simone and Yvonne are new members. So we want to give them a break, let them know how much we love them. So we'll charge them twice what we charge the others. Let them <laughs> No, She actually asked that we give them a discount. But all of you need to be fine because you haven't signed into my rotary. I don't know. Is Ellsworth on the line? Ellsworth, Kendrick, Chiselle, Simone, and Yvonne. We give, we give the two new members a 50% discount on the $4. So they would pay only $2. Okay, who else going to get fined today? I think that's all the fines, but the Mother's Day, of course, restaurants all full on Mother's Day. You can't even get in. Do you, you realize that? That's why really? I didn't go anywhere. Hmm. I was mine and grandchildren. Oh, by the way, um, my little for those of you who didn't hear this little anecdote, my three and a half year old granddaughter was sitting on my lap and I was listening to the celebrations. And at that time, I think uh, Felix touted the fact that we are the only one, only club with five Rotaract clubs of three, three. And so she heard this. She said, Papa, why don't they get four? So again, she's listening. So that might be the sign of a good future Rotarian. But I guess she is challenging us. Go and get more. In other words, don't rest on your laurels. For her, three ain't no big deal. We know that that's a big deal. But I just thought I would share that with you. Mother's Day. Where's Dino? Dino said to his mother one day on Mother's Day, Mommy, I love you so much and I don't want you to work hard today. Today is Mother's Day. You don't have to wash the dishes. You don't have to clean the house. You don't have to prepare the food. You don't have to clean up my room. You could leave it until tomorrow. Now, I, I see in the news that these Leon, uh, Bezos and Bill Gates getting divorced, they, or they, one is already divorced, the other is getting divorced. There's plenty of money to split up, but I'm sure they wouldn't have a problem splitting that up. A fella said that if two of the world's richest men can't make their wife happy, Ain't much chance for us. <laughs> but of course, women would say money isn't everything. But as we all know, money mightn't be everything. But it's as close to oxygen as you could get. The Bible says it answered all things. <laughs> Answereth all things. Oh, the fella said, Leon, you heard this one? Two fellas out fishing. The fella said, hey, man. I'm going to divorce my wife. Well, I say, why, man? I say, she hasn't spoken to me in two months. Well, I say, yeah, hey, boy, I think you better uh, reconsider that decision. A woman like that is very hard to find. <laughs> Have a good day, y'all. God. We got the you. point. <laughs> Thank you. Get, get the point. Okay. Have a good one. All right. Thank you, Father P. There being no birthdays and anniversaries this morning, we'll move right into the announcements. Rotarians, are there any announcements this morning? President Francis, I'm going to steal a minute just to announce our raffle this morning is a $150 gift certificate. So please enter into the chat. Um, it's compliments of the president. Well, I shouldn't say compliments of the president, but the raffle prize is being provided by the president. I'm not sure where the gift certificate will be. You'll be able to redeem it, but $150. So nice. Yes, it's a choice of your, what, wherever you want it for. So you could choose John Bull or groceries, 
you have $150 this morning. So please enter in the chat whether you want one ticket, three tickets, or um, one ticket or three tickets. So it's one ticket for $5 and three tickets for $10. And of course, if you buy multiple tickets, you stand a better chance because Dino and Felix and Cresswell and all these guys, they buy multiple tickets and that's why they keep winning. And Eric, you're banned from buying the raffle this morning. You were on a winning streak on the weekend and we want others to have a chance. So guys, please enter your ticket um, orders in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Donat. Rotarians, are there any announcements this morning? Mm -hmm. I want to thank everyone who assisted in making our anniversary celebration on Saturday a success. Thank you all who attended who participated. Thank you, thank you. Our Rotarian for the month of March has been selected and she is none other than Marsha, Rotarian Marsha. She's doing an excellent job assisting at the various vaccine center. So congratulations, Marsha, and kindly collect your pin from my office. Thank you, thank Rotarian you. Rotarian for the month of April. Rotarian Kami, is he online? I don't see him, he hasn't popped up yet, but he has done an outstanding job during the month of water and sanitation month. As a matter of fact, we won the prize of <clears throat> uh, Club of the Month because of the wonderful work that Kami has done. So congratulations, Kami. Kindly collect your pen from my office. The 28th anniversary booklet is just about completed. However, we are still waiting for the club's history to be added before sending to the printers. Um, PDG, I see you online, so I know you are working on getting, helping us to get uh, that completed. Donations are still being accepted for the 20th, 20th anniversary booklet. So those who wish to donate uh, can still do so. Thank you all for your continued participation and support. At this time, I'm going to ask Rotarian Melanie to please introduce our guest speaker, P.H.G. Yasmin Chang Chung, who will speak on youth development in Rotary. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Youth Service Month. This morning, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, as well as to thank once again our participating interactors who, like I said earlier, are in the middle of school and external exams. So it's very extra special, thank you. Ms. Yasmin Chong has been a practicing and experienced business development and utilities regulation practitioner for over 25 years and has served as a member of the Consumer Advisory Committee on Utilities from its inception in 2001 and as its chairman since January 2005. Through her association with utilities regulation, Yasmin has sought to place the CACU at the forefront of consumer advocacy activities in Jamaica. And under her direction, the committee has become an integral part of the utilities regulation landscape. Recent transformation within Jamaica's energy sector led to her appointment on January 11, 2016, as a member of the office at the OUR. She is also a member of the Consumer Protection Tribunal established in 2013 at the Consumer Affairs Commission. 
In her capacity as Trade Commissioner and Senior Business Development Officer with the Government of Canada, Ms. Chung has successfully delivered several infrastructure projects and business contracts with Canadian businesses in the energy, transportation, services, and education sectors, and has developed specialization skills in the international business practice of corporate social responsibility. She's a graduate of Florida International University and the University of Florida with bachelor and master's degrees in international relations, minor in economics and public administration respectively. Additionally, she holds a diploma with distinction in comprehensive regulatory impact analysis, certificate of achievement with distinction in Latin America and Caribbean studies from FIU, certificate of achievement with distinction in public private partnerships from the World Bank, certificate of achievement in citizens engagement, a game changer for development, World Bank, project management certificate from the PMGI Jamaica and other professional certificate courses in political studies, business development and communication. Yasmin is a Rotarian, District 7020 Assistant Governor, a practicing Catholic, a proud alumna of the Immaculate Conception High School and enjoys reading, sewing, music, photography, and a spirited political discussion. Please welcome PAG Yasmin Chong. Welcome. Thank you so much and good morning to everybody. It is good to be here and um, right up front I commiserate with the secretary, Donne, who indicated that um, of early, you know, when Rima called me about this, um, this opportunity, I immediately said, yes, of course, because it has to do with youth, not realizing at the time that we're an old behind the Bahamas. And so <laughs> it's a bit early here in Jamaica, but nonetheless, I am just so delighted to be here. Uh, Secretary, I'm going to ask you to have me share my screen, please. Yes, you're able to. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, again, thank you for the opportunity to, to just have a discussion really um, with members of the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise on something that I'm very passionate about and something that I think ought, all of us as Rotarians um, ought to, to be passionate as well. And it's what we are referring to as youth development in Rotary. You know, Rotary's youth, these are some of the words that come to my mind when I, I talk about our youth in Rotary. They're leaders, they're thinkers, they certainly are innovators. They're also extremely creative. They're artists in every sense of the word. They're educators, maybe not in the traditional sense, but they certainly do provide us with context, who they are, those kinds of, 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 um, of pieces of work. And they're developers as well. And truly, they're everything to everybody, anywhere. Well, before I go on. So who are they really? They're Rotarians, and I know some of my own Rotarians here in Jamaica will ask me if I'm crazy, but yeah, our Rotary youth are Rotarians as well. Uh, they come from our youth exchange. They are Rotaractors, they're interactors, they're early actors, although not an official program of Rotary, but here in 7020, we certainly pay a lot of attention to it, and I think quite rightly so. Uh, their Rotary Community Corps, uh, often overlooked um, youth group in Rotary. 
And I would really, really encourage all our clubs, including the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise, if you have not already done so, to seriously look at convening a Rotary Community Corps within your communities. And, and they're youth at risk. Youth at risk meaning they're not anywhere on the Rotary um, spectrum, but they ought to be included because believe it or not, that's a growing group anywhere in the Caribbean, anywhere in the world, a growing group of young, vibrant leaders, thinkers, innovators, etc., who are really being left behind. And, and so I believe that this ought to become part of the focus of Rotary um, as it pertains to our young in our countries. So I like this, this, um, this quote from Pearl Buck. She says, the young do not know enough to be prudent and therefore they attempt the impossible and achieve it generation after generation. And I believe that um, we all will agree that this is certainly the case in District 7020 and our youth. So let's look at very briefly the, the, the global landscape of youth development in, in Rotary. Let's learn how other clubs and districts are creating innovative and inclusive youth programs. And we want to look at developing some actionable ideas that can be incorporated into club and or district youth development programs. And then what excites me the most is what and how are we doing in 7020. So this graphic that you're seeing here is is what came out of an uh, what came out of a survey that um, the team at Rotary International and some youth program leaders throughout the world, um, when asked, you know. What are the topics that our youth are, are really interested in when we talk about youth development in Rotary? And it was interesting to see some of them. You look at things like ethics, conflict resolution, uh, team building, you know, self-confidence and self-esteem which is a, a very large issue, much larger than, than, than we believe and that we think. And professional development. And what was interesting to me with these responses was none of them fell under that 50%. And we're talking about 50% of our entire Rotary, Rotary youth all over the world. And it became very instructive, certainly uh, for me, for, for a lot of us in 7020, especially when you talk to youth development program leaders in other parts of the world in Rotary. And I speaking, I'm speaking here specifically of, of New Zealand and Australia, and then you go across and it's, it's Africa, and you come back to North America and then drill down to our own District 7020 in the Caribbean. And what it proved to me is that our youth are not much different um, when we look at that, that, that range of, of, of countries, cultures, et cetera. They're not much different. They are thinking basically on the same terms. They're behaving basically in the same way. Um, and their, their goals and aspirations uh, are, are very well aligned. Um, when you think of circumstances that are unique to countries, to continents, to, to regions. 
So who is doing what and where? And just to just preface all of this by saying that our, our, our ethos in Rotary with regards to our youth is that we believe in developing that next generation of leaders. And our programs are really geared to help our young leaders to, um, to build leadership skills and expand education. And, and that's not just your formal education, but, but much more than that. And then we hope that out of all of that, they will be better equipped um, in understanding not only the value of service, but the act of service. So let's do, let's see what's happening over in New Zealand. We're going to look at the Americas and then we're going to look at Africa and the district 7020 Rilo. And I want to do just a little bit on, on the Oceano, the Rilo Oceano in New Zealand. A very interesting concept um, is really a group of, of young Rotarians, Rotaractors, who are just outside of that age for Rotary or the traditional um, age for Rotary. And they basically are a group of, of young persons who are just interested in doing good. That's really it, just doing good. Um, they are nurses, young doctors, they are business, um, young, young business persons. They come from every career path you can think of. And what is common to all of them is that they share this love and interest in, in doing good. And the other thing that I noticed about them, which, which is, is really commendable, is that their fellowship and their interest in fusing fellowship with service is is really awesome um you would think that they, they go on bike rides for example a lot of them love their bike rides and they do this and while fellowshipping they are dropping off um, food packages mm -hmm. you know they do their races they are doing some good so it's not just about the fellowship but it is also about their their um their service and what fascinates me a lot about rilo oceana is that they have probably i think one of the best um websites um uh, that that really gives you good insight into what they're about what I also like about it is that it allows, it allows non-members of that group to really participate um, in discussions with them, um, just about anything you could think of, fellowship with them, you know, having conversations about how, how do you do this, how can we do that? It's, it's really, really awesome what they're doing there. So in fact, their reach is, is so wide that um, I would encourage everyone to try to, to look at, at, that, um, at what they're doing in terms of using social media, using information technology to just span the entire Rotary, Rotary world. So let's come back over to the Americas where we're still finding a lot of the traditional uh, kinds of approaches that we have used in Rotary over the world. And it's primarily, and you'll notice that's a commonality, it, it, really using the RILA instrument to do this. Um, in the Americas, though, they have, um, they have begun to do a little of what I'm calling restructuring their RILA. Um, so you still have a RILA camps, which really cater to the younger folks, um, meaning high school type um, interactors and so on and so forth. But they too are also starting to include some of our at-risk youth. They're also um, looking at that community core type 
of audience and really trying to, to reprogram the, the approach to, to youth development in, in World Tree. Uh, over in Africa, very service oriented, their youth groups, extremely service oriented. And I believe that that is happening in Africa because they had the foresight really to start with that early act group, which I, I here in 7020, I just love to interact with. I think they have so much to offer as young as young children. Um, you know, a friend of mine, her son taught me the definition of young people and children. And so he said, at a six year old is a young child. A 12 year old, which he's 12, is a young person. So let me say the early act group of young children, I believe is where our future, our meaning Rotary, our future in Rotary resides within that, that core right now. And then we come to District 7020 and a lot is happening in District 7020 with our youth, which I'm so happy to see and to be a part of. Um, we are, we are, we're trying to find that sweet spot where our youth um, try to forget that I'm an interactor versus a rotaractor, for example. Um, that sweet spot where everyone is welcome, it's a home, and where we build and we recognize these young persons for what they do and for what they will become. And uh, we will talk a little bit later about what, um, what are some of those um, things that we're doing in 7020. So very broadly, what is happening across the globe uh, are things like we're restructuring RILO to better understand the needs and the interests of our youth and really strategizing differently um, in order to meet the objectives and meet the goals. And, and this, I want to just stop here for a few seconds because we all believe that we are handed a program and these are the stated objectives and these are the goals that we have. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all need some direction. But what, what I have seen is a kind of reluctance, if I can call it that, to step outside of those boxes, to really understand what we're dealing with when we talk about our youth and to understand what their needs are, what their interests are, not what it is prescribed to be. Um, we are going also uh, uh, using uh, social media as a means of you know, collecting the, the youth's input. In other words, as I like to say to my fellow Rotarians, we need to meet them where they are, not where we are. We as Rotarians, we need to meet our youth where they are. We, learn, we need to learn and speak a new language. We need to use the technology and we need innovation. We need to innovate, innovate, innovate. We need to communicate with them in real time because that's what they know, you know, and we have to be very interactive with them. And I think one of the most important things that we have to do in creating the environment is we have to recognize them. We have to recognize our youth for who they are and what they do. So those roles, their rights, their responsibilities, which I love, by the way, I love to tell you about their rights. Uh, but nobody or very few speak about their responsibilities. And that's okay because we as adults do it too. We love to tell them what their responsibilities are 
we forget many times, you know, that they have rights too. And we're not very clear as to the roles that we expect them to, to, to have and to practice within the youth development program. So what are we doing in 7020? I don't think that we are restructuring. I think what we're doing here in 7020 is that we are in reimagining youth and youth leadership through their own lens. And that's where it ties into the, the whole thing of, um, you know, meeting them where they are. And I think in 7020, that over the years, certainly over the last five, six years, we have been doing quite a good job of that. So when you look at some of the things that I have seen, for example, in the Bahamas, and um, your, I, I think it's a kind of Ryla camp that was done a few years ago. I, I, I think that's just awesome. That's absolutely awesome. And, you know, they say uh, pictures tell you all that there is to know. And those that I've seen from certainly the, the, the Ryla camps in the Bahamas really puts a smile on my face. Because obviously some thought went into it. Obviously there has been um, participation and input from our, our Rotary youth. And, and that's just extremely, extremely commendable. Um, and I have to talk about my own Jamaica. Um, we, we have seen some of the fruits of, of that labor coming out. Um, and I'll speak a little later about um, why I'm saying that we're seeing some of that. And I think it's really due to the fact that we've taken a different look and different approach. We're reimagining what youth and youth leadership should be in our um, in our in our district in our respective countries um what was some of the things that we're doing as well is we're we're being as inclusive as possible um interactors our rotary community core our at-risk youth are, are members of the right of planning committees and so they should and um, I know you must be wondering why rotor actors aren't there. Um, but rotor actors are no, um, certainly in my mind. Um, but part of, of that core that has to happen in terms of the approach we're using and um, the, the plan for youth development, they have to be at that core with us, alongside us, understanding, of course, that they too can benefit from this, as do Rotarians. Um, our youth participants' involvement in selecting professional development projects, for example, you know, where we expose them to traditional and new career paths. And this, this was a big surprise to me. Um, and I'll tell you why, because normally, usually, and I'm using our Jamaican youth as, as an example. Uh, when, you, when you talk about these kinds of youth groups, they really just want to fellowship with each other, or so we thought. They really just want to meet and fellowship, and they really don't care about what's going on there. And you could be up at front talking to them and not with them. And it was very surprising back in 20. Uh, only on two occasions, um, 2018, 2017, sorry, 2017, when we in Jamaica decided we'd have two Rylers to accommodate um, our youth on either side of the island. And we had one in Kingston and one in Mandeville. And it was, it was really interesting to see the responses from a survey that went out saying, tell us what you expect 
and what you would like to see happen at Rilo. And this was one of the areas that was almost common to every survey. They wanted and were asking for some help in terms of their future professional um, development. So they wanted exposure to traditional and new career paths, for example. One would not have thought that that would have been part of what they consider a, a, a youth leadership award, but it was there. Um, what we're doing is trying to build a sense of understanding service a lot better. And it's not just about turning up, handing out a food package or whatever project you might be doing, but understanding that it's really a way of life. Um, they crave for team building and they want partnership. They want inclusion. They want diversity. They want to acknowledge and promote culture. They want to trust because they, a lot of young persons, believe it or not, um, have or are skeptical about trust, especially in these times. And we as Rotarians, I think, would serve as very good role models for them just because they now know that they have a say. There is someone they can come and speak with about anything that's affecting them. Um, and they, they too want to learn how to manage people. The interesting part is that they now believe they can manage us. And that's fine too, uh, because it's all a part of the learning process. And we want to deploy the soft and the hard skills of Rotarians and our external partners. And the next item on there is very, very important, citizenship. And we're not just talking about citizenship in their own country, but we're talking about their citizenship in Rotary. They see us as this huge organization across the world, but they don't get that sense of belonging. And it was very interesting for me back in 2019, when a whole host of 150 youth gathered in Kingston at the University of the West Indies. Many and most were Jamaicans, but we did have um, from the Cayman Islands, and we did have from the, um, the British Virgin Islands as well. And it was very inter interesting to see the interplay, not only among the, the, the uh, interactors for the most part who came from other countries, but about the interaction of even the Jamaicans who came from far and wide. In fact, from Montego Bay, from Portland, from Kingston, even in Kingston, with its adjoining parish, St. Catherine. It was interesting to see that interaction. And that is when I truly understood what they were talking about in terms of citizenship. It is that sense of belonging. And young people, are they, 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 they thrive on that kind of, 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 um, of thing. They want to belong and they want to belong to a wider group than just their own community. We are reimagining youth and youth leadership by being intentional and deliberate in making decisions that affect um, our youth and others. And we're making sure that youth engagement happens in youth adult partnerships that are structured in a way that both groups contribute, both groups teach, and both groups learn from each other. And we wanna, we are helping our young people to be the agents of their own development. And, you know, the truth is that youth are more than passive recipients of external influences. 
Um, instead, I believe that they're actively involved in shaping their development by interacting with, with people and opportunities must be made available to them within their own environment. Um, youth engagement offers community leaders the expertise and the partnership of young people who help adults to fully understand what it is like to grow up, but not just grow up, just growing up in a rapidly changing world. And I like this quote from Kofi Annan. Uh, young people should be at the forefront of global change and innovation. They must be empowered. They, and being empowered, they can be, and I will add, will be the key agents for development and peace. And I want to end on, on this slide with you're seeing there are two, two photographs, one with um, our distinguished past district governor and currently our district foundation chair. Uh, and it was during PDG Patrick's um, term that he said to me, he would like to do something different. Uh, to try to encourage our youth, to try to catch within the net of District 7020 more youth outside of Rotary to participate in these leadership programs. And we thought and thought, and okay, all right, what else can we do? So in 2019, the RILO that I referred to earlier in, in Kingston, the district RILO in Kingston, really had some new features, which we were really testing. And we were testing them because of that inclusiveness, including the young people in decision-making, in designing their own program. What is it that you are looking for? What do you want to do? It was interesting that a few things came up. Um, one, they wanted not only their fellow interactors or rotor actors, and in, in a couple of cases, even early actors, um, they wanted them all there. They didn't see why we would have to, or they would have to choose who is going to Rila. They wanted everybody there. So that was the first challenge for us to ensure that, that anybody within that rotary cadre uh, a youth cadre, sorry, that they would have the, the, the opportunity to attend. Um, they also wanted to have a segment of it that speak, that spoke, sorry, directly to professional development. They wanted to, to, to have some ethics and morals included, and I'm using their terms, some ethics and morals included in that program and so we set about trying to do this with them but why do i have those two photos up there because those two young persons that young female male who at the time was a high schooler and that young man who at the time was a final year student in a college in Jamaica called Case, which is really an agricultural college, agricultural education college. Um, PDG, to everybody's surprise, at the closing ceremony where they got their certificates, which many of them waited for because they were not leaving without that certificate. Um, announced that he was awarding these two young persons, Paul Harris Fellows. Why? Because throughout the entire weekend session, these two young leaders were identified as the next group of Rotarians. And it is interesting because that young lady, as I said, was a high school student at them, 17 years of age. 
and today still very active in Rotary. But here, here is the, the anomaly. She's at the University of the West Indies, the Mona campus here in Jamaica, still doing good, still giving service, but is not currently in the Rotary family. Why is that so? I have been keeping in touch, making sure that we're not losing these young leaders that we think are the future. She said to me last year, she said, I have been here for over a year and a half and nobody, nobody from Rotaract has even checked to see if I'm interested, if I want to be part of this group. What do I want to do, etc. She had to reach out to them. I didn't think that there was anything quote unquote wrong with that approach, uh, because what it speaks to them is her interest and that she was still interested in them. But, but it, 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 it still hasn't gone the way that we would have liked it to have gone because she approached them and was told that, well, you have to go and do um, how many X amount of hours of, of community service. And um, this is without sitting down, talking with her, finding out how did she become interested, for example, because none of them knew each other, um, only to learn that um, the, 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 the president that she was talking to of that Rotary Club at the time did not even know what a Paul Harris fellow was. Understand that, did not know, had been a interactor, had been a Rotaractor at the university in her final year and did not know what a Paul Harris fellow was. Um, I am of the view that this young, um, I'm still calling her an interactor but this young person who loves Rotary, who loves the idea of what we do and who we are to the world, is still interested in becoming a part of Rotary in whatever way, shape or form. And it is my view that this young lady does not belong in Rotaract. She belongs in Rotary. I really do think so. Um, that young man, he came to the first day with his group from his uh, college. And they did not have the resources to stay overnight in Kingston. So they had to make a two hour ride back to Port Antonio from where they, they, they live. And at the end of the first day, he came to me and he said, expect us tomorrow. Come what may, we are back here. This is too important for us to not show up. And that young man today, I am pleased to say, is, is still a part of, of, of Rotary. He's a part of the Rotaract group out there in Portland. And we are so happy for that. And I could give you many more instances of that. I also want to in closing, recommend and uh, recommend commend um, someone who is very near and dear to me. Uh, not only because um, I've known PDG Felix for some time now, because of Rotary, but because of the leadership that he has displayed and the, the I call it the latitude that he has given many of us as Rotarians. And, and very quietly too, our young group, our youth groups, the latitude to just be who they are and to do the good that they do. And I say this because he was the one who back in 20, I think it was 2016 or 2015, was the one who gave um, two young persons from Jamaica's Interact family, the opportunity to join other youth their age um, in Florida at a 
huge Ryla camp there. And those two young persons today still speak about that opportunity and that experience that they have had, that they had back in Florida in 2015. They're still friends with a lot of persons that they met there, a lot of young persons that they met, met there. And we had that opportunity again in 2017, where this year, same young lady that you're seeing there with, with um, PDG Patrick was given the opportunity to go back to that same Ryla camp. This was the first time she was traveling and she came back an even more determined person to, to, come, to, to, to remain in the Rotary family and to do the good that, she's, that, that she wants to do um, in, in her life um, and in the life of her community. So I really want to thank PDG Felix for those opportunities for our youth. Um, also want to thank uh, my friend in the Bahamas, um, Rotarian Rima, for, um, for doing what she does with our youth um, in the Bahamas, yes, but it, it, it's much more than that. And I want to thank you, President Francis, and all members of the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise for, for your me. interest and for what you two do for our youth, not only our Rotary youth, but just our youth in our communities, in our countries, etc. So thank you very much, Rotarians. It was such a pleasure for me to be here this morning. Precious and I look forward to, to talking and, and seeing all of you again, certainly at our virtual um, conference. And I must tell you, I'm very disappointed that I can't be in Nassau this year again. Um, but be that as it may, we'll have other opportunities to, to, to fellowship with you. But thank you so much. And have a good day. And please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, PhD Yasmin, for that wonderful presentation this morning. And we are so delighted to have you in our midst this morning, though virtually. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions for PhD Yasmin this morning? <clears throat> Rotarians, fellow Rotarians, any questions before we move on? President, um, could I, more of a comment than a question. Yasmin, this is Bob Robertson from BTVI in NASA. Um, we're doing a project with the Commonwealth of Learning and the, and the Government of Canada on youth at risk. I'm gonna be speaking to you offline about having you get involved in it, if you don't mind, from the Rotary perspective, given the information and detail you made in the presentation, I think it would be very helpful for for that project, but I, I really enjoyed the information you shared with us today. And thank you for getting up so early in Jamaica. I, I, I very much enjoyed that presentation. Thank you. Thank you too. And certainly please let us speak offline. I'd be only too happy to, to see how I can participate and contribute to that project. Thank you, Rotarian Bob. And are there any other questions? I'd like to invite our club advisor, Shakira Lightborn from Government High School to bring the vote of thanks, please. Hi, a pleasant good morning to all. I would like to say uh, thank you to President Francis for moderating this morning's meeting. I would also like to say a special thank you to our guest speaker, Yasmin Chong. Um, that message was well received. I'm glad as a teacher that you're looking at youth and youth development, which is very important. Also, I would like to say a special thank you to Malia Sherman from Kingsway Academy um, for the invocation, to Nikwa Ambrista from the great government high school. Thank you for the loyal toast. Also, that special welcome from Secretary Dornette Thank you, Secretary Dornett. And to Melanie Cartwright. Yes, Melanie, you've been doing a great job as an advisor to us at the Government High School. 
And I would like to say a special thank you for that and also for introducing our guest speaker this morning and also to our Sergeant of Arms for such awesome jokes this morning. Um, I was sad to hear about the fines, but the jokes were really good. Thank you for that. And also a special thank you to Asia King, who's going to be conducting our four-way test this morning from Kingsway Academy. So I would like to say thank you to everyone who has played a role in this morning's meeting. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Advisor Shakira, thank you. Now we'll have our raffle, Secretary Donnett. Thank you, President Francis. Let me go ahead and share my screen because I know one of the things members come for every Thursday is to hear the guest speaker one and two to win the raffle prize because we always have great raffle prizes. So hopefully uh, the person who is most deserving of this $150 gift certificate will be the winner. So before I spin, just let me know if your name is missing because I could do with a few more ticket sales. All right, okay, there we go. Raffle is now closed. Here we go. And the winner is, oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> Look, I'm not giving it up. <laughs> I'm not giving it up. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, guys. Next time. I was hoping, so. honestly, I was hoping that Paige, President Adrian would have won, you know, for getting up so early, um, participating in the raffle. But that's it, guys. Next week, we're going to have that great prize. I won't say what it is yet, but it's going to be wonderful. So please come again, President Adrian, Secretary. Um, Dan, we are happy to have you and all the members of the Interact Club, um, everyone who participated this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Secretary Donet. Now we'll have the four-way test by President Asia King from the Leadership Academy. Of all things we think, say or do, is it the truth? Is, is it the truth? truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and fellowship? Will it build goodwill and fellowship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. And now our final toast interactive Brandon Butterfield, Kingsway Academy. Please raise your glasses as we toast to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. To the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. All the way around the world. Oh, yes. And I'm, I'm following suit. Rotary around the world. Thank you, Rot Rot uh, Rotarian Masha. Thank you all for your participation in this morning's meeting. And have a blessed day, everyone. To our online guests, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a pleasant day, everybody. Thank you, and you too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay, bye, -bye. bye everyone. Have a great day in school. Have a great day. Hi, Tanisha. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, yeah. Bye. bye. Nice to see you, Adrian. Bye, all. Bye, Adrian. Say bye. Bye, Donna. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Bryce. Have a good day. Okay, you too.